Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to reassemble the turbo I had taken apart in the last episode. Uh, I got the exhaust housing back from the machine shop. They drilled out the broken bolt hole as well as a shaft from the turbo shop who went ahead and balanced it for me. Right now what we're gonna do is focus on reassembling all these bearings into the CHRA. And then after that, we're gonna put the new piston rings uh, on the shaft for the turbo, at which point we'll reassemble everything together. Starting with the little bearings here that go inside this housing, there are two of them. They're withheld with these little clips. There are four total, two on the inside and then two on the outside. I never took out the internal ones and according to the turbo shop, you can go ahead and just leave them in there and just replace the outer ones. And I was gonna go ahead and take their advice for that. So what we're gonna do is grab a little bit of motor oil, which is what I have right here. And we're going to dunk the bearing in it and pop them in. All right, once that's in, we're going to take a little circlip here. Fancy pliers. Try to get it in. Usually a little bit of a faff if I get lucky. Okay, almost. Gotta lock it in there. Okay, perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but all the way in there. All right, let's continue on with the other side. Good. Grab the brand new bearing, soak it in oil. This is just motor oil. This is the same oil my car uses, so I just took a little bit of spare I had and uh, used it for this application. All right, nice and a clip sound. Okay. Go ahead, put this on. I cleaned this up nicely. I don't know if you remember, this was uh, full of uh, caked on carbon deposits. So this is cleaned up now. This can go on. The next step we're gonna work on is taking this apart. This has been beautifully cleaned by a Vargas Turbo. They uh, cleaned all the deposits left on these blades. This shaft had a, a bunch of oily residue on it. So what they did, they not only balanced it, and I got a picture of that for you, but they also gave me some alignment marks. So I don't know if you can see here, black marks all the way across all these bearings. And that is basically how they recommend be installing this back into the CHRA to ensure that everything is as balanced as possible. I had already taken some of the tension off, but let's go ahead and completely loosen this. Again, reverse rotation. And then we have to apply heat to remove this wheel again. And there you go, completely separated again. I went ahead and installed both piston rings 
on the back side here. Next step is to reinstall this into the CHRU housing. So put a bit of loop on it. And there we go. Should be pretty smooth. Let's loop up the piston rings because they have to compress a bit as they go in there. All right, there's my mark. There's my mark, good. That's the sound of the piston rings as they popped in. Okay, now it's time to get this stack of little washers and bearings back in their place. I've already put a little piston ring on uh, this one. So now, let's get the order right. First you have smaller washer. This one's kind of tight fitting, so you have to kind of walk it in there. Fits nicely. Spacer goes next. 270 degree or 360 degree, like in this case, thrust bearing goes. A little bit of oil on that. You can see which side faces down. It's got a little oil channel, which faces down like so. Now we have this double washer. I'm trying to install this one the opposite way, which I had him making this the bearing surface against the plus bearing. Just looks like because of its size, that would be the right way of putting it. Let's try installing this little piece and then putting the rest back together, like so. This is a little different than what came out of the car, so I'm having to kind of learn as I go, but this feels good. piston ring. Make sure not to pop it out on the way back in. Make sure my go. My O-ring is nice in there. Looks like it's pretty happy. All right, let's get these bolts back in here and uh, go from there. A little bit of Loctite on them. Okay, feels pretty good. Let's get the assembly back out. Oh, slide this guy back on. Gotta align him back the right way. Looks like he's happy in his new home now. Come on, there we go. Got my alignment mark back here. My alignment mark front as well. That looks good. Let's get a little bit of Loctite on this nut. I mean, let's put it on the shaft actually. And let's torque it down, keeping its alignment marks right on the money. Okay. Let's see how 
Now we're looking, mark here, mark here, good. This is looking pretty good. Awesome, very happy about that. Last few steps and we should be home free. This is the old one if you're wondering why I have it sitting here. It's just uh, there from the old kit. Let's get this guy out. New one back in. Turning out to be a little bit of fast. Come on, get on, get on there, dude. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Now, very important bit is to align these two housings back where they're supposed to go. So let's look for my Sharpie mark, which again was not the best thing to use because it didn't look like it stayed on there very well, but here I found one there. Let's look for my Sharpie mark here, it's right there. down. As visible as I thought they are. Let me go get my flashlight and uh, double check these. I'm going to go finish these up uh, on the vise just to kind of get one last little um, bit of torque on them. Be right back. All right, last and final step. Let's reassemble the last little bits of the turbo. I'm going to write my name in here so in case somebody sees, uh, has the turbo part in a couple years, hopefully it'll still be there. So, all right, and then 2020, famous year. There we go. Okay, let's get this back aligned. There's one lesson I personally learned from this is uh, use something better than um, a Sharpie to give your alignment marks. Because with enough greasy fingerprints, Sharpies like to not be very visible after a while. All right, so let's kind of guesstimate and then it's pretty easy. This has to be right in line. So let's go with that. I might leave it a tiny bit loose so that when it's on the car, I can rotate it if need be. Luckily I have this rubber coupler that hopefully will grant me just a few inches of uh, freedom. But yeah, this is looking pretty good. You know, also get this guy started. Actually. A uh, K24 turbo, hopefully good for many more miles to come. Virtually no shaft play anymore, no noises. Um, cost wasn't too bad. So feel free to ask me any questions. If you uh, 
are specialists in this and you see some steps that I missed or some things I could have done better, please feel free to comment. Uh, I'm just here to try to help everybody out. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.